Whether you consider yourself to be a saver or a spender, understanding your money habits is an essential life skill. It's not simply about understanding how much money you need to save and how much you can afford to spend, but also about understanding the emotional drivers behind these decisions as well. Are you aware of your financial behavior when it comes to saving or spending money? And what factors influence or drive you to do either? So in late January 2023, I scoured the halls of PodFest Expo and asked some of the attendees the hard-hitting question, are you a saver or a spender? And during these conversations, we also explored how guilt can influence the financial choices we make, how people from different cultures have different views and approaches to money, strategies people use to manage their finances and avoid debt, and how families navigate conversations around money. If you would like to bring a little money mindfulness to your life, follow us on Instagram at Money You Should Ask. I'm Bob Wheeler, and this is Money You Should Ask, where we explore why we do what we do when it comes to money. My team and I would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to all of the wonderful guests who appeared on our show today. We truly appreciate the valuable perspectives they shared and their willingness to openly discuss their unique insights and experiences with you. If you would like to learn more about our guests, stick around to the end of the show or check out their links in the show notes. What's your name? My name's Lori Adams Brown. And what's the name of your podcast? A World of Difference. Are you are you married? Yes, I am. And are you the spender or the saver? Or are you on the same page with your husband? Um, we're pretty similar, to be honest. I would say, uh, depending on the situation and what we're saving for, probably overall, I tend to save a little more. Um, but we're both pretty good with money, and we generally pretty much agree on that. So, yeah. Cool. And do you talk to your kids about money? Yes, I do. And I have a daughter who's 15 who teaches the rest of us about money because she's like trying to make $10,000 a month when she's still in high school. So a little entrepreneur in the family. So. That's pretty cool. And do you have family meetings around money? Um, my husband would really like to schedule every Friday to have a financial check-in. And it's uh, we've tried it. We've had it on the calendar and we often miss it. So... <laughs> Not a priority. Yeah, well, it's just more like, do we have to sit and talk about that on a Friday? Like, it doesn't feel fun. <laughs> do it on a Sunday early morning. Sunday early morning. Oh, yeah, because that's exactly what you want to talk about when you're in bed on a Sunday morning. <laughs> totally. Uh, do you share a joint be- a bank account or do you have separate accounts? We have a joint bank account, which is kind of funny because when we got engaged, I just had this weird assumption we would have different bank accounts. I don't know why. I don't know. It's because I was raised by like a feminist mom who was raised by a Ro- Rosie the Riveter and my my grandma was in LA, like a literal, literal riveter during the war, and her fiance was overseas, and she couldn't have a bank account back then. This is pre-RBG giving bank accounts to women. And so my grandma, my mother's mom, made all this money in California, put the money in her fiance's bank account, and then he died in the war, and then his family took all her money. And so I think there was something inherently in my upbringing where it was like, you need to make sure you have your own bank account. So when I mentioned that to my fiance at the time, he's kind of like, wait, you don't trust me to share a bank account with you? And I kind of thought, yeah, that's true. And it would make more sense because we don't make a lot of money now because we were young and just married. And so I was like, yeah, we should probably have a joint bank account. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds traumatic. I'm, I'm feeling traumatized. Right. What would be one thing you would say to your younger self that you would say, hey, pony up on this or focus on this a little bit more as you get older in regards to your finances? I think that um, preparing for multiple income streams, I would have probably told my younger self to do things in your life that understand like a side hustle earlier kind of thing. So because, you know, I I work in tech, I work in business in Silicon Valley. I'm the senior manager of uh, talent development now for Hive Solutions, and we're like a global company. But I have a podcast that's kind of a fun hobby that I really enjoy. And I think multiple income streams is just kind of the way to go. Totally is. What's the mission and hope of uh, your podcast? Yeah, so a world of difference. We're about celebrating our differences and making a difference together. I feel like the best way to make a difference is to bring the differences around the table, more diversity around the table. All the data shows that you make better decisions, make greater social impact. So come on, check us out. We love having new people. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great. Hey, so what's your name? Uh, Jim, Jim Burgoon. Great. And you're working on a podcast. What's the current working title of your podcast? So the current working title is the 818 Collective. 
And it's really about to speak to faith-based business owners and entrepreneurs who are more on the creative side who want to do this thing, but they don't fit in the mold. Okay. So let me ask you this. Are you a spender or a saver? I tend to be a spender. I want to be a saver, but... And what makes you want to be a, a, a saver more? Like you spend, you're thinking maybe you should go to the other side. Like what is what is going on in your mind when you say, ah, I should probably do better? Yeah, so I'm starting to think of legacy because I really want to get to a place where my kids have stuff. And then even in old age, I want things as well. And I'm a free spirit, so I'm kind of following the impulse control right now mm -hmm. while my wife is like, hey, we need to do this. And so I'm trying to come more into the line of, hey, we do need to have long term things for le legacy for life later than I am now. And so that's why I'm trying to get that mindset around there. No, absolutely. Are you still paying off holiday debt from Christmas and all the holidays 2022? I am not. No. And did you did you budget for the holidays or did you just hope it all worked out? Both. My wife budgeted and I kind of prayed and hoped. So but it was one of those things, though. We did something real. And we've done this for the last couple of years. My wife and I, we decided we weren't going to go in debt for things that people may never use again. And so we're more into let's have an experience together than let's give you gifts that'll rust. You know, I think that's so awesome. I don't give a lot of gifts at the holidays because I figure it's supposed to be the spirit of giving of myself maybe and not so much material stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just me being frugal, but I find I don't need gifts from other people. I'm happy to just be in connection. Yeah, I'm right with you. I don't need a whole lot of gifts, but give me an experience. Even if it's just coffee, I love the experience, the conversations, the, the memories you create. I think those are so much more priceless than if something I may use for a while. Do you ever make expenditures that you don't tell your wife since you're the, you're the, you're the spender? I, we, there was a time, we've been together 23 years, and there was a time that happened often. Okay. I am much better at telling her, hey, I spent this, but it's usually after the fact. So it's kind of like, um, I should have talked to you first, but... <laughs> oh my God, 23 years. You, I, I thought you were 23 years. <laughs> I, get, I get that a lot, but I am going to be 45, and yes, we've been together 23 years. Wow. And do you have open conversations around your finances, whether it's kids, parents, spouse? Yes, absolutely. Because I believe open conversation brings truth and truth brings freedom. And so if you're trying to hide things, then you just literally are going to be in a real bad place when everybody finds out the truth. So why not have the truth first? Absolutely. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. Thank you so much. Can you tell me your name? My name is Hannah Baba. And what is the name of your podcast? It's called The Stoop Stories from Across the Black Diaspora. Awesome. So are you a spender or a saver? I think my husband would say I'm a spender. But is he wrong or right? He's right. <laughs> Absolutely right. Absolutely. I don't I have problems saving, but that's why we have two incomes. There you go. And are you paying off holiday debt from 2022 or are you clean? We are clean. We are clean. I know it's surprising, but we are very clean. Thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. And was that uh, pure luck or did you plan ahead and strategize for the holidays? I think we needed to, to do some planning. Um, I come from an immigrant family and so there's a lot of gifting and money that goes out that is not intended originally, but like, you know, the cousin needs something somewhere, the aunt needs something somewhere. And in our community, in our culture, you kind of have a responsibility to take care of the whole family, which can be a whole nother can of worms in, in this society, that's hard. Um, but so, you know, we kind of made, we made it work. We made it work. That's awesome. You know, um, you mentioned that about being an immigrant and having to care for the rest of the family. And I know that there's a lot of communities where I talk to people who, if they're the successful one, they have to carry the whole, forward, the whole family forward. That can be a lot of pressure. How do you navigate that? Sometimes it can be frustrating, right? Because there's this idea of, well, you're the family that's in America and dollars are growing in the trees. And of course you'll take care of us. There's a little bit of guilt as well. Of course. Oh my goodness. So it's, 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 it's a game, right? Yeah. It's, 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 um, it's balancing ego. It's being humble as well. It's, it's forgetting about yourself a little bit. Um, and you know, just a balancing act. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I think, um, guilt is the international language. <laughs> 
I mean, it's guilt. And then when it's a deep cultural, ancestral, oh, yeah. we take care of each other, you know, <laughs> when that stuff comes up in the immigrant experience where we are here in this very individualistic society, right? You know, make your money, you pay your bills. It's, it's hard to, to have spare money to just send all over the world. But, you know, so, but that guilt, I feel like the guilt works. Sometimes it feels bad, but it keeps me connected to those people. So it's tricky. It's tricky. So do you and your husband have a joint account or do you have separate accounts? Do you get to have your own fun money? How does that work? So in my culture, again, the good part is a woman, a wife's money, and, in our, and actually I'm Muslim, and this is in the Muslim culture as well, a wife's money is hers. Wow, awesome. So we come to America and there's this joint account business and, <laughs> and this idea of like coming into the marriage and you pool all your money together and that, it's, it's, a, it's a difference, right? It, it makes you have to make some decisions. So we do have a joint account, but I also have my own account. That's awesome. On the side. We love that. We love that. Um, what would you say your biggest fear, if any, going into 2023? Is there any, th any financial things that you worry about? Um, I'm paying, we're paying for a college tuition right now. And then we have a junior in high school who's about to also next year be a senior and go to college. So I would say kind of balancing that with the responsibilities of family back home uh, would be the biggest thing to, we're thinking about right now is how to balance both and also get a vacation, yeah. for example. Go to Hawaii, go to Europe, and not feel like, not, not feeling guilty about that, I think. Absolutely. And what is the mission of your podcast? It's, uh, it's a story-driven podcast about just black life, black stories, with the premise that black is not a monolith, it's not, it's African Americans, but it's also African immigrants, Caribbean immigrants, and all of us share a lot and differ in a lot. And that's what this podcast is about. It's about community. It's about tackling some difficult questions and issues and being very honest, like you're sitting on a stoop, which is the name of our podcast. It's like the casual, honest conversations that happen on your front stoop. I love it. Well, I wish you well. I so appreciate you taking the time. So, hey, what's your name? I'm Jake D. And do you have a podcast? I do have a podcast. Podcast is Talking Tractors. All right, Jake. So are you a saver or a spender? Yeah, I have strategies for both. <laughs> okay. Really do, yeah. All right. So you think about it. You don't just impulsively spend. Rarely. All right. Rarely do I impulsively buy anything expensive. Are you still paying off holiday expenses from 2022 or are you in the clear? I'm in the clear on that one. And what is your take on spending for the holidays so that you're not in debt in January, February? Again, to have a good strategy going into it. This year we did a big trip for our boys instead of buying a bunch of presents. I mean, Santa Claus still came. They still got their stuff, right? But uh, we didn't have all of the junk that just sits in the basement that we throw away or donate later. We went, we went to Dollywood and we stayed at the Dream More and we went and saw Santa Claus. And yeah, it was super cool. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's actually really cool. And Dollywood's pretty fun. Dollywood's pretty rad, pretty rad. So um, do you have a joint checking account with your wife or do you keep separate money that you can go and play with on your own? I have cash. Yeah, I keep, I keep cash. <laughs> Does your wife get to have cash? I always make sure that she has cash. Absolutely, I do. Uh, and then we have a joint checking. I think she still has a checking account and we have separate credit card accounts. But look, she runs the books and I'm good with that. So, yeah. Do you talk to your kids about money openly or is that sort of an open secret? Yeah, we definitely talk about the value of a dollar and this dollar equates to this candy. And they, they both have savings accounts and they both have their own cash supplies as well. Right. So we, when we show it to them, like, here's how much money you have in your wallet, man. What do you want to do with it? Oh, Pokemon cards. OK, so like they understand that this Pokemon card it was this dollars and all these dollars are gone. Now we have Pokemon. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's awesome. It's it, being transparent about money is such a cool thing. Is there anything that you worry about financially as you go into 2023? Yeah, everything. I worry about everything. Um, I think about that a lot. My, my group, my clients, we talk about it a lot and we, everything we've been doing for the last 18 months is prepping them for the next turn in the cycle. Right? So yeah, I think about everything with that. 
And you, um, so you work with tractors and farm equipment, all that stuff. You have a population of the country that's probably maybe a little more rural, maybe a little more conservative if they've got uh, farmland and stuff. Do like, is there something that you see in that population that's buying your equipment um, that you have to worry about come recession time or anything like that? So there's a lot of indicators that we do look at. Home starts is a big one, even though we're not in real estate. Uh, we're on the front end of that, right? So anything developments. We pay a lot of attention to mining and min minerals, mm -hmm. gold specifically, and then we, we trade tractors as a commodity. Okay. So we pay attention to what's moving where, like are, are big trucks moving to Australia or are they going to Africa, right? Or general construction equipment, is it going to the Middle East or is it going to Canada or is it staying in the U.S. and which cities? So yeah, those are kind of the big indicators I'm thinking of right now. What is one thing that you would go back and tell your younger self if you could do it again, like what strategy would you give yourself? I would have went independent a lot earlier in life, right? I worked for big corporations for 20 years. Well, actually, they're family-owned co corporations, but they're, they're big business corporations. And I was trying to build something within their walls that they didn't want to build. So when I left the walls of Caterpillar dealers and I started building things for myself, I felt so much better, not so much happier. My life just got a lot. Everything's better, right? I, I think I had to be there. I had to, I had to go through those trenches to understand what to do, but I, I would have shortened that cycle by half. You know what I'm Follow your passion. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? My name is Trevor Furness. And do you have a podcast? I do. It's called The March of History and then a YouTube channel that is Trevor Travels, where I travel. So, Trevor, are you a spender or a saver? I'm a saver. I'm a budgeter. I used to be a banker, so I learned all about money from banking. Okay, and so was that, you, so you learned it from banking, but did your parents talk about money when you were a kid? To some degree, my dad liked to uh, maybe hide the money, hide what was going on financially with the family from the kids, right? Not from his wife, right? He's very good about sharing it with my mom, but with the kids, he didn't want us to know how much he earned, what was going on with the finances. Eventually, I got into college. I said, Dad, I need to know these things because I don't know how much it takes to live. I don't know what, what a good income is. And so then we got better about sharing it. But uh, so, yeah, so my dad certainly taught me a lot. My mom has taught me a lot. And just by making mistakes, right? by doing all the wrong things, by taking out too much in student loans and being saddled with tons of student loans and figuring out how do I get myself out of this mess. That'll teach you a lot. Absolutely. And with that, um, are there any things that you have financial fear around, financial anxiety around as we go into 2023? Yes, certainly with a uh, podcast, it's a wonderful, beautiful career, but you always are thinking, how do I monetize this, right? How do I make sure that this dream of mine is not just a pipe dream. It will become a long-term reality where I can support myself and my family going into the future. That's part of being here at PodFest is figuring that whole process out and talking to people that have done it before. So that's certainly something that you know lives in my mind all the time is how do I turn this podcast that is growing and has a great audience into something that I can really live off of. So it sounds like you're destroying the myth that after one podcast, you can be a multimillionaire from podcasting? It's possible, but highly unlikely. It has not happened that way for me, but I, I think, you know, part of the process is failing, not failing, but maybe if you don't have instant success, then you figure out what not to do and you find out more about yourself. If you have instant success, everything comes easy. Well, eventually you will have road bumps in life. And when you have those, if success was too easy, then how do you know how to overcome the road bumps? Because you never had them earlier on in life. So I think it's all part of the process. Absolutely. What are some of your big goals for 2023? I would say to grow my podcast to reach a, a greater audience. I haven't done many interviews. This is actually my first ever inter interview. So more interviews with other podcasters to spread my message, to meet you know, more of a community. And spreading the message is a big part of podcasting, right? So I'd love to go on more shows. What's one thing you'd love to spend money on regardless of if you have it or not? It's got to happen. Yeah, it's travel. I love to travel. So I spent the past two years living in Spain and spend you know, most of the money I made as a part-time teacher there, just traveling around Europe, filming for my YouTube channel. So it was part work, right? There could be return on investment, but regardless if there is or not, I would have been traveling. And if you could go back a few years in time, uh, you know, when you were 18, when you were 16, what would you tell your younger self around money? I would say you don't need to go to the best college that's the most expensive and take out huge mountains of student loans. You know, that's such a myth. Uh, I had it in my head in high school, and you make these, deci these decisions when you're 17, 18 years old, it's go to the best college possible, and then it doesn't matter the price, you take out student loans to afford it, 
And then when you graduate, you get the best job possible and you pay off the student loans. Now, I did all those things, but it was way more difficult than I ever expected, right? So in hindsight, I would tell a younger me, you don't need to take out six figures in student loans. You don't need to do that. That saddles you with an unbelievable burden once you graduate. If you don't like your career, it's tough to transition when you have this ball and chain around your foot. It's tough to make life transitions like buying a house or buying income property, right? So I would say, you know, go to community college, go to a trade school, go to a, a university that gives you financial aid and don't come out of college just crushed by debt, right? Because it will affect all of the decisions that you make in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. What is the mission and, and, and hope for your podcast? Uh, I want to spread a love and awareness of history to the world. I think that history is fascinating. I think that often the way it's taught in schools is maybe not so fascinating. People tell me all the time, I don't like history. Really, just they don't like the way that history was taught to them. A lot of times it's the rote memorization of dates and names. That's exhausting. And, and if you come out of history class memorizing all these different dates and names, but hating history or feeling that you hate history then it's been a failure, right? Because all those dates and names will not stay in your mind forever. They will, you know, be ejected eventually, and you will just never want to pick up a history book. Ideally, what you should do is teach people to love history, right? To have a passion for it. Even if they don't know all the dates and names, if they pick up a book on their own because they have a passion for the subject now, that's what really matters, is conveying that passion to people. That sounds awesome. Thanks so much. Um, so we're here at PodFest, and we're with uh, a group of international students that are here volunteering. And we've got... Uh, Divya Shri, I'm from India. I'm Satvik, I'm from India. I'm Kony, I'm from Ivory Coast. So I'm going to start off with an easy question for each of you. Are you a spender or a saver? Both. <laughs> <laughs> you got to save to spend. Yeah. Like It depends. If I have a goal to buy something, I'm a saver or else I'll Always spend a it. Saver. Right. Yeah. All right. um, I'm mostly saver, yeah. Mostly saver? No impulsive buyers here. No impulsive buyers. As we go into 2023, it's a new year. Um, is there anything that you worry about financially? Like, we are still students. Uh -huh. We don't have that much worries, but sometimes when it comes to maintain all the money by yourself, you'll think to spend, like, what is need and what you want. It's like need or want. Yeah. It depends upon that. And do you feel like you have a safety net with your parents so you don't have to worry school will continue? Um, yes, because my parents, they pay for the fees for my school, so I have less worries about that. Awesome. Well, so glad to have you here. How about yourself? Yeah, like I actually saved off some money just in case if something emergency happens. So I don't think I have any fear if I have to be worried about that. Okay. And how about you? Um, for me, I'm not too young. So I'm not too much expecting for my parents to spend on me anymore. So I have a kind of fear, yeah. But I'm not going to worry about that because being able to come here is a kind of challenge and I think back home I will be able to to figure out to find a way to make money. So I don't I'm not expecting any more from my parents here. Okay. And so the question I have for you is, you know, you come to America and you get to see our excess and our abundance and all the wealth and all the crazy things. Is there something that when you come here you can still hold on to and say this is my identity, being from the Ivory Coast. This is something I love about my culture, um, the way I view certain things that just you hold near and dear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, in my country, we don't have that. It's, I'm not going to say it's a poor country. We don't have that, uh, this development we have in the U.S. But in my country, we uh, make joke with everything. Yeah. yeah, with everything. Nothing is serious. Even education, even politics, yeah, we we don't have, we are, we're always happy, even, even if we don't have money or something that we can, I don't know, um, we don't have maybe car or we are not rich, but most of the time we are happy. We make joke with everything. Yeah, that's something I'm really proud of. Yeah, I... Being able to see people here with maybe big cars. When, if, whenever I go to school, my, my classmates do have cars. I don't have cars. I, I use, I walk to school because it's not that far. Sometimes I feel like, okay, why do, why do I don't have a car? But I feel like, okay, yeah, it's, it's still okay. Being able to, to, to go to school, even if I don't have a car, it's something easy. Back home, I don't have a car also, but I'm happy. 
Yeah, yeah that's something. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can say I've been to many countries in Africa, and everybody that I've met is incredibly happy. So that's that's one. Th that's my takeaway from all the countries. So let me ask you a question because I've been to India. As a woman, uh -huh. right? There's a very strong caste system. There's a very hierarchical order of things. Um, do you feel pressure to follow the the old ways, the the traditions, or do you feel comfortable in standing out and saying, this is my voice, this is how I want to show up in the world? I'm proud to say to follow my culture. It's not like pressure. It's what my whole family and the whole India follows. It's not like pressure or it's not like uncomfortable to follow that. It, it feels like it's with you. You can't give up that, you know. It's not like pressuring. Respecting culture, that's what they teach us from the uh, childhood. Mm -hmm. Respecting elders, respect your own culture. So as a male in Indian culture, is there pressure for you to like marry within the culture, um, be the breadwinner, um, follow in the footsteps? I believe it used to be before, but now the new generations are open minded and it's like it's, it's changing now and everything is actually good. It's not the same anymore. OK. And what about um, in Ivory Coast? Is there a pressure as a male to be a certain way? In our culture, it's the responsibility of men to take care of a family. Mm -hmm. So we are not supposed to expect for, from our, our wife or any, any, even if your wife is working or doing something like that, you are responsible for the family. You have to take care of people. Mm -hmm. But things are kind of changing. It's not that, uh, I don't know, it's not that required anymore. But yeah, we still practice it some, in some area. Yeah. yeah. What is a financial goal you have for 2023? Do you mean the amount of money? No, just do you have a goal? I want to travel. I want to save up a certain <laughs> amount of money. I want a car. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I, I, was, I wasn't expecting to be here in 2022. Okay. So being here is something, yeah, big. And maybe being able to travel in maybe Europe country. Yeah, it's a goal for me maybe in yeah. 2023. Yeah. Awesome. Back home, I was actually dependent on my parents, but after coming here, I'm I'm the, I'm dependent on myself financially. Awesome. Now I believe that I can pay my own tuition fees in, instead of asking my parents. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't spend that much money in back home, uh, but it's not like I don't even waste that much money. After coming here, I came to know how my mother and father they maintain the finance of the house. I never expected this much hard. So I get to know, no, the financial maintenance is too harder than anything else. So I'll try to save money and like being even more responsible than <laughs> earlier. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. Thank you. A big thank you to our special guests, Lori Adams Brown, Jim Bagoon, Hannah Baba, Jake Don, Trevor Furness, Devishri Nanjapar, Southwick Nagesh, and Kony Mamadou. Your openness and willingness to discuss your experiences with money was incredible. If you would like to learn more about our special guests, their podcasts, or social media profiles, check out their links in the show notes. 